I am recording my reaction to something that just finished running after seven hours. So, in a series of recordings that I may or may not publish, I built this workflow, basically. And um, I, I walked through basically statistical astrology. Um, which I, I know is, is, is something that maybe maybe uh, doesn't seem like it should be a thing. But, but humor me now for a couple of minutes. Essentially what we did is we're using data analysis to have a workflow talk to R, R statistics, right? Um, and R statistics has a program called SWEFR. Um, and that's the Swiss ephemeris for R. And so it's just Swiss ephemeris, but now you can actually have, um, instead of, there are lots of implementations of Swiss ephemeris. There was the original one that I worked with was the Alan Edwall, I believe, or something, Edwall, uh, PHP version, which if you knew PHP, you could do it. If you didn't, then you couldn't. Um, then there's the C++ version, that that powers you know stuff like Starfisher, which was what I use. There's now that there's a Python version. The Python version was kind of hard to find and get working, so I in, ended up uh, downloading R. But um, you could you could you could hook in Nime and have Nime talk to R, and that enables you to use something like this, the R snippet to um, read, where's my pop-up window here? It's, it's coming, I think. There it is. That enabled you to use the R snippet to set your folder where you have all of your asteroid ephemeris files so it knows how to calculate the position of the asteroid. And then you could basically plug in to the Swiss ephemeris functions, SWE calc to figure out, okay, if I have this birth time, where was this asteroid or this house cusp or whatever located? So this was cool because this allows you to make your own, basically, astrology program. And in previous recordings, about seven or eight or so different recordings, I walk you through how to build up to this point. Um, like I said, I may or may not post that because a lot of it is, is uh, uh, me stumbling over stuff, but, but you, could, you could get the idea. At the end of the day, once you're done, you produce a nice table with a bunch of asteroid locations. And so um, I have 9,000 asteroids, 100 people in this sample, right? And these, are, these names up here are files from Astro Data Bank, right? And they're just kind of the random anonymized files for some of them, famous people for some of them. And I just drew a hundred of the files for like the top hundred. So if you see a lot of them up here with sexuality and and just generic names like Minson and stuff, um, suicide, hanged, that's because a, a good chunk of the Astral Data Bank files start off with these anonymous name files. But you have famous people in there too. Um, so we 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 built this now. And then I put my own information there is, is one of the, the, the things. And then we checked it against reality. So, yes, indeed, my son is in 9 Scorpio. This is 210 degrees starting from Aries. And so 210 degrees is the start of Scorpio. 240 degrees is the start of Sagittarius. 300 degrees is the start of, uh, of uh, Aquarius. And so on and so forth. So this tells you where everybody is. Now, the one thing I didn't do um, in, in the end of those recordings was build this one, single find. This is actually kind of my, what lies in this node is kind of like my dream implementation of Astro because although in writing Alma Mater and Laurentia, I had this series of files which I had used to create so-called uh, word mining, text mining, on the astrology, um, 
it, it, it was scattered in so many files and it was such a mess that I, I couldn't tell you how to do it or, or, or anything. So the, the, the really serious files were the last two that I built, XML ADB8, which is this one. It's an awesome file. Um, I have a whole bunch of ways of chopping up lots of data because it's 62,000 people times 10,000 asteroids times 15,000 words times 18 particular aspects. Um, and it, th there's so many truly billions of data rows for, and for my personal computer, that's a lot. So you have to be able to run this over the course of months. And this is my way of being able to do it in chunks. So I just set these terms and do it in chunks. And, and then I have this really neat kind of squaring formula, which I'm super proud of. It's a formula to take uh, a number and map it to an ever-growing square. Um, it's, it's kind of a nerd moment, but it's, it's, I'm really proud of it. It's like one of my, one of my inventions here. Um, I'm sure other people have this, this formula, but uh, it's, a, it's a special formula that I came up with to basically take a number, one, two, three, four, five, it's an asteroid number, and put it on a square. So the way it goes is that one goes here, two and three go here, four goes here, three goes here, four goes here, five, six, seven, eight goes here, nine goes here, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 goes here, 16, and it grows it in the shape of a square. So it essentially creates something like a QR-ish code um, based on the linear sequence. It's, 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 uh, it may not be you know, the coolest thing, but, but it tells you the pixels that all these and assigns a unique mapping to it. The problem that I had was that in that unique mapping, trig pixelized and everything, in, in order to produce my interpretation files, I had to do this one thing, which turned out to be wild inconvenient. And, and so it's pulling all these, these asteroid positions for these 62,000 people, but I needed to convert those XML files that I was writing into PNGs because the only node that I had available in Nine for reading images was from PNG. So these are actually squares and they're, they're actually little pictures with varying the red and the green and the blue for asteroid positions. Um, and so a certain amount of blue tells you like the sine and a certain amount of green tells you the cosine and that's where it is on the wheel. Um, I was able to write these files to the tune of 3,000 asteroids, but I wasn't able to easily interpret in here. This is, this is how I interpret the asteroid. It does a whole bunch of, of uh, text mining and meaning making, and it produces basically a file like uh, this one, new interps plus, to where it has these words, for example, this was the old Laurentia interpretation of Paulina. Um, and that file that I just showed you in nine says that the word publication and publicity came up the most times out of eight possible slices of 8,000. Whoops. Oh, that's no good. Out of eight possible slices of 8,000. It came up in two of those eight documents of my, my sample slice with a p-value of this, of, of this statistical significance. Um, what that basically means is that in my reduced vocabulary of, I say reduced because I had 45,000 words from WordNet and I chopped it down to 15,000 because, you know, certain words, they just weren't as common. And so in my vocabulary of 15,000 words, it basically was looking in the wikis of all the people who had the asteroid Paulina in significant places um, in, in either conjunct opposition, trine, or sextile to, could have been the node, Mercury, Mars, Midheaven, something like that. I, I usually use the node in the Midheaven, but I also found as I was going through that you could tell when an asteroid was active if you looked at Moon, Mercury, Mars, Neptune, Selene, and uh, Lilith. 
So if you did that with, uh, oh no, not Lilith, um, Ascendant and Node in the Midheaven, there were eight of them. If you had an asteroid with those, there was a higher chance that you could tell that that asteroid was active. If you had it next to the sun, it was hit and miss. If you had it in a square, it was hit and miss because people handle tension differently. Some people, are they roll with it and some people will never show it to you. So if it was next to Pluto, if it was next to, I don't know, um, uh, Venus or Jupiter, you could not tell if that people were using the asteroid. So that was a whole other analysis. But the bottom line is that um, using those eight, but primarily the node in the midheaven in what I called hot aspects, um, conjunct to opposition, trine, sextile, conjunct opposition, trine, and sextile uh, to those positions with an asteroid, uh, whoever had it and had more of them was the basis of a category. And I would ask whether people who had more of those hot aspects to that asteroid among those eight were somehow different in their wiki keywords from uh, the folks who didn't have it as much, didn't have as many hot aspects. So these people had statistically significant differences to the tune of, of these words. And the p-value starts off at the lowest and gets higher because this is basically the level of randomness. Um, the lower the p-value, the less likely that relationship is to be random. And the more documents meant that out of my eight slices, um, the more times that came up consistently. I also did a later analysis, which uh, yeah, I've just added recently, to see, okay, the word publication came up a lot with Paulina, but compared to where it also came up a lot across all other aspects, was this different in crosstabs? So if it was different, then I put the chi-square there. If it wasn't different, then I didn't put anything. Um, it may just be that Paulina really is about publication, but so are so are, are other asteroids, lots of other asteroids. Um, and, and that's actually what happens. I asked myself um, on the separate chi-squared list, was this list starting with, say, hospitalize and moving to um, era and then moving down to, well, and moving to record, then era, then publicity. Was that a better interpretation of Paulina than this ordering, a publicly hospitalized detail cop featuring no legacy? Because that's how I read this. No. This chi-squared only interpretation was not more accurate than the words. It did help you differentiate when this asteroid was, was standing out compared to other asteroids, but this is the better interpretation. This is more like distinguishing. Now, the reason I'm recording is because I, there is a point at which I can't walk you through any farther what I did. Um, I, I can explain it, but it, it's no longer a matter of, of whether I can show you how to do it on your own computer. I spent the rest of last night and a little bit of this morning taking these with my R snippets and everything and making, as I said, my kind of dream asteroid interpreter in here. This node by itself does what I've always wanted. You put in an MPC number and you get out an interpretation. Um, this one here, you, when I say interpretation, that means you get out the list. It's in one workflow. I've done it across several workflows. So let me show you how different this one is from these guys. See, like these guys, I'm just doing a R snippet. I'm saying, okay, just get the asteroids here. Just get the angles. There's some experimentation that I did in there, but uh, you know, there's a little bit more in here because I'm, I'm looping through some things, but this one, this is, this is, this is a big deal. Um, now, let me tell you why this is a big deal. 
originally, so, so first of all, my R skills got better because I realized I was trying to record those other videos and I, I was only about I don't know, 50% on my R. So it's like the blind leading the blind. If I'm trying to show you how to do it on your computer, and again, I may or may not post those videos because it's a long series. You can learn a lot about NIME and big data through watching that if I post it. Um, but ultimately, and, and, and those videos remove the hocus pocus from, from you know, statistical astrology. I want statistical astrology. Watch. Here it is. Okay, so, but, but let, me, let me just kind of tell you what the end result of this one was. First of all, I went into, okay, I'm going to back out. You've got chart info, right? And I've got some basic info, which has, has my stuff in it. And then I've got this other one in here, which has all these Astro Data Bank people. And these are all those guys. These look familiar, right? I took the first hundred. And these are the beginnings of the Astro Data Bank. As Astro Data Bank grew, uh, in, in its listing at least, it started getting into more well-known folks. There's 66,000 individuals with days, months, years, latitudes, longitudes, birth times, Gregorian or Julian flag. And then I've got an index, which I use to join for to their wiki files because it's just too many files here. So index number 35892 can be used to pull from another file, which has keywords from John Henry Lorimer's wiki. And that's the thing that is used to mine. And you'll see the mining shortly. But here's, here's his birth information and everything. So 66,000 people. I combine the Astro Data Bank stuff with any custom stuff. And then, lo and behold, you get this, right? This is the joint file. It's got me up there and everything. So you can put your friends in there too. It goes into a loop and essentially um, chops it up into windows. To make it manageable, I chopped it up only to 100 because it, it, it takes a long, 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 long time to do it to 66,000. And then I basically say, okay, with those 100 names and asteroid information, uh, look up, well, not asteroid information, but birth information, look up their... Uh, Asteroid locations. So indeed, my series, and, and this is when you do this, by the way, you do want to put your own information in there because you know your own information. I know my series is in 657 Aries or something like that, 656 or something. Um, and that translates to 6.95 in decimal. I know my palace is here um, in around 15 Aquarius. So this is legit. This is a legit test, and here are all the asteroids and stuff. Apparently, King Francois is not, not populating because he's, he's old. He's from the 1400s. But look at this. 10,000 asteroids. That was never done before, uh, those videos that I was doing last night. So I've got the locations of 10,000 asteroids. And in theory, by doing statistics on a whole bunch of people, I can figure out where Archipinko um, is located in all these people's charts. And I can do wiki correlations and things on Archipinko to see what Archipinko does. I've never actually even seen that asteroid until right now. It's a weird word. Um, but, you know, there are 10,000 of them, so you know, we don't know them all. You join it to some other asteroids uh, because I went in and I said, okay, this, this R snippet, if I double-click it, is based on a walkthrough. It goes from asteroid number zero to asteroid number 10,000. And when you look things up in Swiss ephemeris, you add 10,000 to them. So um, it starts off in the realm of like Ceres and Juno and whatever, adding 10,000. And then it goes up to stuff like Prisca 997. Um, but then it goes even farther because that would take you to 1100. Um, 997 plus 10,000 is you know, it's near, it's near, uh, I said 1100, 10,000 plus 1,000, but, but it takes you around there. But this one goes even farther than that. But that's a walkthrough. Some asteroids I downloaded 
are not in that range. So Eris, for example, is 136, 199. And that one needs to, oh, and these are the basics, right? Zero through 100, sun, moon, mercury, Mars. That's why we push the 10,000 on there. But, but then there's some additional things. But anyway, once you get past all this, we do the filtering and we, we, we transpose it and we make some nice neat, neat tables. And there we get a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, nice, fun. I do angles like the house cusp and the vertex in here. I do special guys outside of the 20,000 here. I'm oh, sorry, in here and so on. But now, um, oh yeah, and, and this was a simple test of significance just to kind of demonstrate how we, how we determine whether things are coming from a different distribution. This file, when I originally did these interpretations, it was perfectly legit. What I basically did was say, if you had hot aspects, so if you had a, uh, if you had a, a conjunct or a sextile or whatever between your asteroids versus didn't, versus didn't then you were subject to all the statistics. So if you have one conjunct or two conjuncts or three, but especially three, three was my threshold for filtering which words were worth looking at because they're 15,000 words and you have to cut somewhere. So if you had three of those hot aspects, I considered you significant. I looked at the words that you had and I used those words um, to compare you against the rest of the samples. Uh, but the, the thing worth noting is that either you did or you didn't. It didn't matter whether you had one, two, or three such uh, instances of Paulina and Midheaven, right? So, so the table actually looks, let me see if I can go into nine and show you what I'm talking about. One of the things that I produce is, I no, not that one. Maybe it's this one. No, not that one. Okay, so this is the kind of, I do a lot of stuff, right? So not only do I do cruise call wallace tests, but I do Pearson correlations. And these tables only keep significant p-values. But, but there's some other stuff which it doesn't look like I have easily. Oh, right, triples. Maybe it's here. Ah, this is it. Okay, so take a look at this. These people were noted for more than, for three or more hot aspects. And... See, this one had the asteroid Hinky conjunct Mars. This other person had, oh no, and, and they also had it conjunct Neptune, conjunct Selene, and conjunct Note. This other person had Hinky conjunct Mars, sextile Mercury, conjunct Midheaven, trine Neptune. Okay, so one, two, three, four hot aspects. One, two, three, four hot aspects. One, two, three, four. And that's because I was using more of these asteroids. The bigger that list gets, the more your requirements go up. Otherwise, the list blows up. So anyway, uh, the words in these guys' files were going to be some of the cutoffs that I used to determine, look, don't look at the whole 15,000 on this. It's going to take too long. So only look at the words that people with more hot aspects had. So, um, but again, did versus didn't. I didn't count how many of these. I didn't, I didn't say, well, you know, you have to grow with it. And I did that last night. In other words, this person had four hot aspects. This person here has one, two, three, four, five. So is there some, not only a yes versus no relationship between the number of significant angles, but also a correlation the more of those significant angles you have, the more between you know, your special asteroid um, and your wiki word frequency, basically, um, it, it's that a relationship? Or is it just you had a bunch of them and the wiki word relationship was a little bit more pronounced? Now, I actually think that this method is safer, the did versus didn't. And the correlation one is much more stringent because instead of saying did versus didn't, you're saying, okay, a little bit more of this hinky asteroid, a little bit more of this hinky asteroid, a little bit more of this hinky asteroid, 
are, is the wiki word going up with that? Okay. So I, I wasn't concerned tonight. Oh, and yesterday when I was recording those in the demonstration, I, I made up this kind of fake category called Eastern Hemisphere versus Western Hemisphere, and I did it on 100. And guess how many significant relationships I found? None, because that's a BS, low sample, low statistical significant thing. And that's what you want. You want no significance on stuff that's just BS. Now, getting back to this, that was a digression, but it was an important one because it tells you the underlying assumptions of what I was doing. Look at this R snippet. This one does more. Not only does it calculate the houses and the asteroids, Moon, Mercury, Mars, um, Neptune, uh, mean node, Selene, and the asteroid I'm looking at is Begjigitoba. I've never put this one in a table because it was outside of my, it was outside of my 20,000. So I'm doing this one for the first time. So it calculates ascendant, midheaven, vertex, and it also appends these locations. So first of all, my R is better because in a single R snippet, I get everybody. Ascendant, midheaven, vertex, moon, mercury, Mars, Neptune, mean node. So I get asteroid locations for all these people. And look at this number, 62,000. I did it for all of them at once. I didn't have to chunk them because I found how to do them all in a single R snippet. And it didn't take forever and I didn't have to break it up. So this is all 62,000 people's locations for these things, including a custom asteroid if you so choose. Big deal. So then what I did is some math on these because not you don't just want the asteroid locations you ultimately want the uh, angles of separation that's the asteroid locations that's its own thing you want to know if having the sun in a certain sign does something then you would go with the table as I originally produced it from the R snippet but what I wanted instead was the relationship between those guys and my custom asteroid now obviously this thing was conjunct itself all the time uh, but but I was like, okay, what's the angle of separation between this and Mars, this and Neptune, this and mean node? And so I changed the table to have only angular differences. So these are the angles. So I have, for example, um, Begjigitova tridecal Mars. And um, it's, it's this person here. Oh, and I have a conjunct Mercury because it's within, it's conjunct-ish. It's like six degrees, right? This person here has it um, in conjunct. So, uh, and, and I say in conjunct for both the 30 degrees and the 150. Anyway, you get the idea. So then I go about one by one, because I didn't have a, a neat way of doing this, labeling it. I said, okay, if the angle is less than five degrees, call it a conjunct. If it's greater than 175, and it never goes higher than 180 in using the thing that I used, um, then call it an opposition. And what that ends up doing is replacing the angle with its, its uh, name. So once you go through every single one of these, you end up with this table right here. Conjunct, try, conjunct, conjunct, conjunct. You know, Neptune is very slow moving, right? So you can, you can see certain stuff for these, these files, but you end up with names, okay? Then what we do is we count how many times each person had it. Note, note this. This is basically the hot aspect table. So let's say family distress here has a sextile to Mars with Beg Topo. There's only one. Let's say suicide person here has a trine to Selene with Beg Topo, but only one. But if you go farther down, um, you're able to count how many of these with a column aggregator. And you see, this one had none. These, these guys had none. Vertex is in the way. I didn't do anything with it. And so I, I later had to pull it out. But this one has three. A sextile, a sextile, and an opposition to these three. Okay? So I count the hot aspects. And then this, is, th this node here is the reason why I couldn't walk you through how to build this. Because I did 
all kinds of really crazy exotic text mining just over the last couple of years. And it, it, it just couldn't. Here's the table called 42,000 stories. 42,000 of my 66,000 people, or some of which were du duplicates, so it's 62,000. 42,000 of my 62,000 people um, had wikis that you could look up. Some of them were just like, that was a suicide. It's over, right? Uh, and so they didn't have wiki information or Wikipedia information. I actually have a file which tries to pull from the internet from Astro Data Bank article, if it exists, and obviously these anonymized people um, won't have it, right? So you don't see a lot of, you know, hanged, mensen, um, earthquake, suicide. You don't see a lot of the anonymized stuff because they're anonymized, right? They're private data. So they won't have wikis. And so you can't mine words from a wiki that's not there. Now we have actual famous people who have wikis. Okay, so there are 42,000 of them. And I did some parts of speech mining, which is like, this is a preposition, the word in. This is an adjective. This is a plural noun. This is a regular noun. RB, that is a uh, adverb. And uh, this is a, a past tense verb or something like that. And it's basically telling you how heavily those feature in the wikis when you do a parts of speech tagger. So if you say C spot run, the part of speech tagger is going to say C, which is a verb. It's an imperative in that sense. Spot, which it's probably going to think is a noun, not a proper noun. It's going to think it's the word spot, not the name spot. And then run is uh, another verb, right? And so you get for that particular sentence a certain count for the number of verbs and the number of nouns. And the structure is going to be different, but also... Not only does it have parts of speech tagging, it also has WordNet tagging. The word C is an action, and so WordNet has that in a particular file. And so I said, okay, this is an adjective just in general. This is an, this is an adjective related to something. This is an adjective topic. This is a cognitive type of word. This is a cognition process type word. This is the communication type word. These are the file structure of WordNet. So now C spot run could be um, a biological action, seeing a biological verb uh, or a motive, a movement based verb running. And spot could be just, I don't know, a, a, a space type noun. And so now we're getting into the details of what kinds of words are in these wikis. I, I say wikis in quotes. I don't know why I air quoted that because they're real wikis, right? So then we have even more. These are the actual words that were in those files. Homicide, kill, mistress, yada, yada, yada. No family, youngest, yada, yada, yada. Actor, who becomes, yada, yada, yada. After I, I sliced out all the stop words, like the articles to and a, uh, the, when I took all those out, these were the terms that featured in the articles, and I also did it line by line. So it goes from paragraph to paragraph, and line by line creates groups called stories. Paragraph one was about this, paragraph two was about this, paragraph three was about that. So lots of lots of really detailed stuff. And all kinds of tagging for the kinds of words, the topics, and everything in these people's wikis you can see that as long as you assign frequencies to those kinds of things, you can mine that. Now, um, so what I do is I take the hot aspects here and I take the stories here. I join them. So now you have both, right? 42,000 people, constant file, whole bunch of stuff. And then... I split out that, that list, homicide, kill, mistress, um, and where is it? Split collection column, this one. And what that ends up doing is, here's, look, so all these split values, these were the words that were stored in that collection set. Uh -huh. Look at that. 
local talk show host, quote, singer, songwriter, guitarist, folk rocker who achieved greatest solos were great. Uh, you know, so these were all the words that got pulled out of this person's wiki. I do some, some stacking to get the words that showed up in these people's charts. And then basically I do that same thing, not on the, just the hot people. These were the people who had three or more of those hot aspects, but I do it for the whole population. So these are all words. Look at that. One and a half million word associations. There's our guy, homicide, kill, mistress, gunshot. Tells you a lot about him. This wasn't, this wasn't BS, right? This was, this is, these were keywords from this person's article. This is what, what he's about. And there were other people who were going to have the word homicide in there. But anyway, you take all 62,000 folks and you take all the possible words, you get one and a half million of them. When you take the folks only with the hot aspects, you get 67,000. Okay. I slice them out. I slice out only the words I want to look at because I'm not looking through. I want to have, look, I still end up with one and a half million. It didn't help very much, but, but whatever. I make the remaining words into a document vector. So now they're all their own columns. This is different from saying folk singer, rock, greatest hero of all time, right? Now it's folk, yes or no, singer, yes or no, rock, yes or no. And that's, that's the overall kind of design of this table. This table has 8,000 columns. It can be quite a pain. So anyway, let me close that. Once I do that, I join it back to the hot list. And here you go, open, yes or no. All right, 42,000 people with wikis. Original, yes or no. Other, yes or no. Play, yes or no. Okay, caching, because it takes up so much memory, I have to put it on disk. And then missing values. These filters down here don't like missing values, so I fill them in with zeros. And this is actually very slow, so I, I don't know if I want to wait for this one. But I was going to say, you may have to take my word for it. Okay, there we go. Zeros, right, instead of missings. Missings are going to make the Cruz Call Wallace test mad. Then I filter out something. Now, I'm not, I think it's vertex. There's something that I do. And I only take the numerical stuff. Now, for efficiency, I... See this? Get the means of all columns to determine whether Cusco Wallace is even worth it. Look, I, I struggled last night, really, like, like, uh, uh, waiting for this stuff to go. So the bottom partition only includes numerical columns like this. And and again, you're you're seeing, okay, we haven't done the stats yet, but but we're getting everything number in, into a number, uh, number format. Okay. Another thing I want to note about this is that it's either a yes or no for the word, right? For for the topics, it's about the frequency. So let me scroll over here. Okay. See, these words are only zero or one. And yet these topics in the beginning are, are decimals because they're basically saying how often did creation type verbs come up in the article? How often did general adverbs come up? How much did utterances like huh or yeah or uh or Bruh, you know come up in the article? Um, that's essentially what these frequencies do. This is informative because it's a proportion in, in some way in the article. But the words as zeros or ones, if you're a singer, then the word singing and sing and sung and singer is going to come up like a million times. Okay, we get it. Michael Jackson was a singer, right? Do we need to say the Michael Jackson article had 50 instances of the word singer? No, that's going to be bad. So it was a decision that I made earlier, and I think it's a much stronger decision. The, the singer is just going to have it once. It only counts once. It doesn't count 50 times because we know certain people have a whole wiki and they, the word sung, song, songwriter, it's going to come up like 100 times in that wiki if, it, if this person is you know worth their salt. And they shouldn't have 
Uh, that shouldn't say 100, whereas Joe Blow Anonymous has the word singer once. Um, so it's only one, only one. A yes or no for the topic coming up. So that's worth noting. Um, you don't want to overweight. Every time the word German came up, you know, it was, wow, every time the word German came up, it came up like 20 times. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't want to do stats against that. You want to say once. So that's just the thing worth noting. Now, what I, I did is I, I took all the numerical columns, and this was important. I started trying to run my non-parametric test, which we're going to get to soon. But um, I found that, one, it was taking too long. And two, this group by is the punchline. I told you that this whole thing that I'm doing was really, really significant, really, really, really important. Uh, and it's because of this group by. Well, took a long time to run, which is why I did it outside the loop. But look at this. Ultimately, the most hot aspects anyone has was six. And so what I did is I grouped by the number of hot aspects they had. If they had zero hot aspects, I took the average frequency of appearance of their topics. And if they had six hot aspects, I took the average frequency of appearance of their topics. So it's a group by, right? People who had two hot aspects on average had the stuff appear this much. Um, so anyway, there it goes. Now, I also with the words, I go way over here. If they had six hot aspects, right? Zero right here and so on and so forth. And then what I did is I asked whether these were correlated. The more hot aspects, did you either have the less of the word with a negative correlation or the more of the word um, with a positive correlation? And so that was my way of saying, look, I don't even know if I want to go through all 8,000 of these words. I don't, trust me. I have to I have to reduce this group somehow. If if these things are hit and miss and they're random, see like take a look at this one, spanned. Spanned had apparently the most appearances in four hot aspects, not in five or six, and not in one or two. So the chances are that if it it might just be random, right? It's it's it doesn't follow a coherent pattern. But this one encyclopedia has 0.01 for the lower ones and zero for the higher ones. That seems to be a relationship. It seems to, you know, it's a negative correlation. Almost all of them are. Um, but, but that follows more of a pattern. As we get farther along in the number of hot aspects, we get a lower number. Even if it's very, very tiny, we get a, we get a relationship. And so then what I do is, uh, I go into the loop, column by column by column, and do the correlations. The linear correlation filter goes in, and this was just the last round, so it's only one word. It was asking whether twinkling obeyed a significant relationship between increasing hot aspects and increasing or decreasing appearance of the word twinkling. And apparently it didn't, because the randomness was 66%. It needs to be less than 0.05 in, in my analysis here. So uh, it gets thrown out and it doesn't make the final list. The final list of significant correlations is this. 2,000 words out of 8,000 words seem to kind of obey at least to, to a, a very, very Flintstone type estimate of six row thing correlations, right? Now you're like, how are you going to do a correlation on a sample of six? It's a filtering mechanism. That's all it is. It's not, we're not even using this for anything except to reduce the number of words I have to deal with. So all these words, they're like, oh yeah, this followed pattern, definitely. P.0008. Okay, nice, right? Nothing on here is, is, is higher than P.05. Right? That's the highest one, 0.049. Okay, so this dropped the words a little bit. And then I go through and I basically cut out using a reference column filter that original list. And now we have only 881 columns. Um, 
pretty cool. That's that's a lot better, right? Because what I ended up doing was was some additional filtering, and I don't, I don't remember how I did it, but I say that there's there's 2,400 instances here, but then I end up uh, just basically turning all these guys into columns and pulling the columns out. And then what you end up having is only 881 columns instead of 8,000. Um, because I'm, I, I think some of the words are like, I, I don't know if they're duplicates or what, but, oh no, you know what it is? It's because there are multiple groups. That's why. Um, ultimately, the word company made an appearance for not only zero hot aspects, but two and three. So it, 2,400 was, uh, was a little bit more than we ended up with. Okay, so now we have 800 columns instead of 8,000. And what I did, we're, we're almost to the end of this here, but I'm gonna tell you what the significance is. Um, this is a long recording, by the way, because this is essentially, like I said, the statistical astrology, but this is the most stringent testing um, I've ever done. And I was on not so much pins and needles, but I was in suspense because I'm like, look, this is the first time I've ever tried to label asteroids based on correlation, not based on yes chunk, no chunk. Yes chunk, no chunk, as you can imagine, is a lot easier to say, oh, there's a relationship between these words. When it was zero, when it was one through five or 10 hot aspects, um, it's easier to prove, not prove, or to support. We're not trying to prove, uh, but to support a relationship. But can you support the whole rises with or decreases with relationship? That's a lot tougher. So I loop through the columns. Let me show you how this is configured. I use hot aspects as a category. You have one, you have two, you have five. And then I, I say, is this, now, so now I actually look at how everybody is distributed. And uh, really I should have done correlations for the doubles instead of Cruz Call Wallace. And I took out the correlations because they were taking a long time. But uh, still, the uh, oh, and I use bootstrap sampling. Bootstrap sampling means that of my forty-two thousand people, I'm going to pull one out, put them in my sample, and then put them back, and then I'm gonna pull some somebody out and put them in my sample. I may or may not pull the original guy. I, I reduced my sample to ten thousand because forty-two thousand again was taking too long. So I do bootstrap sampling. It's just sampling with replacement on on ten thousand folks. And on these 10,000 folks, we're going to ask, here's the big punchline, whether when you group these guys by hot aspects, does the frequency of occurrence of athletismo uh, change? And it goes person by person. So if you look at what I'm sending into this port, there are a bunch of people who had three hot aspects. When you look at their frequencies, their ones or zeros, are they splayed across the sea? These are all three, 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 three. Is their pattern of one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, different from people who had two, 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 one, one, one. Is that a different pattern from the people who had three, from the people who had four, from the people who had six? These people had six, 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 six. One 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 zero one 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 zero one 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 zero, right? Okay, that's that's ordinal, and it looks like their their arrangements of these ones and zeros are different, and that's what the Kruskal Wallace nonparametric test does. If it can find that man, people with zero zero mention of athletism um, tend to have mostly zeros, but people who have six instances of hot aspects with that with that the asteroid I'm looking at didn't have ones mostly. And we can say that the distributions are different with statistical significance. And there's, there's really no question at that point 
whether or not there's a correlation between the aspecting of your particular asteroid and this particular word in a wiki. No question. Um, at least no statistical question that, that, you know, in terms of, you know, scientific journals and when you publish or whatever. I told myself while I was waiting the six hours for this thing to cycle through that if there is a, uh, if nothing comes up in this list, I'm going through 800 samples of 10,000. Um, if nothing comes up in this list, I'll be a hair concerned because it means that the correlation method is tough. And it's, it's tough to satisfy. You can't say the more Begjigitova aspected, the more of this concept. You might be able to say, if Begjigitova is aspected, do you have this concept in a different distribution? That's what I did for this Excel list that I showed you, right? And it's legit. These things line up with my Laurentia interpretations really strongly. Uh, see, this is the Laurentia interpretation where you, you stress talents that border on genius, though they're slightly deviant. Uh, publication of hospitalized, anyway, that by itself, you know, it's public, publicly hospitalized, right? Yeah, right. You say full you're reaching. I'm like, no, it's, I'm, I'm just summarizing, right? But if you just kind of go down here, um, you see that you see that overwhelmingly these words are not random. I mean, they have p values, so it's not really reaching. I'm just I'm just simplifying it for this video. But the point is that they do need they do tend to line up our work. And I said, if I only have one, just one, then it shows that there is one word that can stand both my correlation filtering and my Kruskal Wallace test. And it made it through the bootstrap sampling uh, of just total attempt at normalization type uh, at, at normal distribution. Did I get anything? Actually, was tired. I went to sleep. I woke up. It was like Christmas. Here's the result. One word. And the word was really. This is a big deal. Because this is a new kind of correlation. Unlike the one that said, look at document frequencies and chop it into 8,000 um, and then do it across eight documents to where I have to even report this column. And it was a yes or no based correlation in those eight documents. It wasn't even a correlation. It was a yes or no based uh, non-parametric test. This one was a correlation-based test. And uh, really, it's, it's actually word number 500 in that list of 2,400 from earlier. But look at that. It's got a significant p-value. Begjigitova, as an asteroid that I, I grouped, um, kind of, it wasn't subjective, but it was more uh, fuzzy set-based, you know, in my head, is where your creativity takes over everything. That was the definition. And the word really, if you think about how we use the word really, it, it's not a random word compared to something taking over everything, controlling the scope. So if you had only one word that was going to be statistically significant for this particular asteroid, and you had to line it up with just observation, this is legit. This, I mean, if only you could only have one word for a concept which takes over everything, really is not a bad candidate. I don't know if it's clear why this is a big deal, but uh, essentially, this whole workflow is an asteroid interpreter. Um, and, and and I was telling myself that before I went to sleep. I was like, bro, you, you wanted to do this. You wanted to have a machine-based asteroid interpreter. So So now what we can do is we can pull a random asteroid from the Minor Planet Center or Astro.com or whatever, asteroid number... Uh, X, 2022 X, uh, B39, right? Has, has no name or anything. But even before it has a name, we can pull its ephemeris file into the Swiss ephemeris folder, have it get the asteroid locations for these 62,000 people, reduce it to the 42,000 people with wikis, and then do this kind of thematic chopping or whatever filter it by correlation, and at the end of the day, see what words in a descending order 
work. Now, the other thing about this word is that I was like, whoa, I could have missed it by hair. Because to be honest, if this table had been blank after 800, like I said, I would have been a little bit concerned. I'd be like, oh, dang, correlations. There's no, you know, the, the astrological relationships aren't so strong that you can do correlation. The best you can do is cluster chunk, cluster chunk, yes, no distribution. That's still good. I mean, because the, all these asteroid interpretations that I showed you, they're still legit, right? But but you kind of wish you could get a, the more, the more, or the more, the less relationship consistently with some words. And then, of course, it's bootstrap sampling and, and stuff like that. But look at the, man, that p-value, 0.0016. That's, that's, that's a thing, right? It's, a, it's, it's not a very, you can't really deny it. You know, it's, it, it survived the correlation filter. It survived the kruskal wallace test. It survived the bootstrap sampling and everything. And it lines up with the observation. And the other thing about it is, look at my row filter. I did not know I had done this. This is P.02, not 0.05. I don't know why I did 0.02. I think I was thinking that maybe, because I did it on purpose. I clearly typed it. But I think I was thinking that, oh, we have 800 columns and we're going to have so many. Not under a correlation filter. So this is an even tougher condition. There are almost certainly, when I more than double this to 0.05, which is what I will do the next time I run this on a different asteroid, um, I'm almost certainly going to get other words. Will I get really again? Maybe, maybe not. It was bootstrap sampling. It's, you know, it's the whole point of bootstrap is to do it over and over and over. I only do it once. Um, but um, still, I, I mean, a, a 0 0.0016 correlation is, that's what it is. So this is an asteroid interpreter. I have a sorter here, but there's no need to really sort one row. So uh, who cares? But yeah, like I said, I, I can't walk you through how to build this one because it gets extremely complicated. It has a, has try-catch ports because when Kruskal Wallace gets something he doesn't like, it's like, oh, uh, and it you have to just catch the error and move on, right? Um, but also, the, the main reason I can't tell you how to build this is because this file, um, you have to get it from somewhere. And it's like the file I used to produce all of the WordNet stuff with the columns. And it's all, some of it comes from Astro Data Bank. Some of it comes from, it's, it is a, it is a beast to try to put this particular file together. And so at some point, you, we can only go so far in how you can build it. But I hope walking you through this shows that, uh, that you know, if you're going to test asteroid meanings or aspect meanings or sign meanings, this is pretty much one of the ways that you, you go about it uh, or you can go about it, right? I could have gone in and I said, well, what did... What if I wanted to know where the asteroid Brachiosaurus, didn't know this was a thing. Yes, there is one. What if I wanted to know what the asteroid Brachiosaurus does in a sign? In a sign, not in aspect, but in a sign location. Well, I wouldn't have done work on these guys. I instead, uh, you know, with the whole conjunct, trine, sextile, instead I would have done work on these guys. The original positions. And it's the same. It's the same kind of thing. And you, you find that when Brachiosaurus is in, I don't know, a certain section of Aquarius between 310 degrees and 315 degrees, do the words differ uh, non-parametrically or whatever against other locations? It, I used an ANOVA for that kind of stuff um, because my original one, when I was still messing with pixels, did all three of them and it was a, it was pretty beastly but again i couldn't get the pixels out in a convenient way my old test actually did three things it did the kruskal wallace from down here with more error handling it did uh, a linear correlation um, on a different branch within the loop it did an analysis of variance of things and then it did some other something, and it did it on more. Um, so uh, th this this file this file produced some really crazy stuff, right? It's uh, not this. It's this. 
Yeah, so you see, like, what I just showed you was only the, the non-parametric, but it also did Pearson R, and sometimes you'll get an ANOVA in here, and it depends on what kind of data I'm working with, because the tables were huge, but I chopped the tables up in that one. So that's another way you could do it, but but frankly, since I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't get the XMLs and the PNGs to work conveniently, I, I'm not using this anymore, and also because it's chopped up in a different file, I'm not using this one. Um, but this one, yeah, this is a beast. So that's my, uh, my, uh, machine. It's not machine learning. It actually isn't machine learning, but that's my, my, my stat interpreter of an asteroid. Now what you can actually do is go in here and change this number. And some of the columns, which have Begjigitova fixed as a name, you can change this number to whatever asteroid you want to know. Asteroid 50,000, quar, or whatever. 60,000 would be the lookup. Um, and I call everything asteroids, by the way, even the sun, because after a while, there just there are too many different kinds of bodies, dwarfs and centaurs and whatever. So if I wanted to interpret quar, I would replace this with 60,000. And then I would replace the columns that say Begjigitova and run the whole thing. And at the end of the day, after I turn this back to P.05 the way it should be, I'm going to get a table saying what quar is associated with. And this is correlative. So there you have it. A, uh, a uh, stats-based interpreter of asteroids.